Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex, see, and it's, it's a ramble, see, and we're here until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. Hello, everybody. How are you? I have no guest right now. I am. It's just you and me. And I'll bore you for a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to go to the phones. And uh, again, another day in which I'm really tired. But my problem is I've been playing a video game, and when I play the video game for too long, I get... And today I started playing it, right? And um, I kept playing it, and I kept playing it. I kept killing zombies. I even, I even uh, uh, took an axe and killed a dog, okay, in this game. Uh, it's called The Last of Us, and uh, I, uh, uh, I played it, and, uh, you know, I'll just sit down for a couple of minutes and play it and see what happens, and three hours later, I decided I better put the joystick down or the thing down because it was, my hand was starting to hurt, and I was so loopy. I mean, I literally got up and was bumping into walls, Okay. So that's it with me and, uh, and uh, 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 games, video games. Wow. It, uh, boy, these lights are bright. For some reason, they seem brighter than usual tonight. I should wear dark glasses on this program. That would, that would help a little bit. I can turn it down just a tad. Let me see here. Let me turn that one down. Let me turn this one down a little bit. There we go. It's still, I still look good. I still look lit. But it's not, a, it's not, it, it, after a while I get used to it. So it's not a problem. Um, so anyway, I was playing this game and, uh, uh, you know, I've been playing this a little, I guess a little uh, secret of mine because I never talk about it much on the air. And I mentioned it last night and I suddenly realized it was the first time I'd really sat down and talked about this on the air. And that was um, my... Uh, 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 playing of video games, that I enjoy video games. I, mean, I got to do a few things here while I'm talking to you. Uh, you know, I, I do video games, and I like playing them, And uh, but I, only a certain type, what I call the adventure ones, uh, the first-person shooters, and they were kind of adventures, and you got to figure out where to go next and how you're going to get from this ledge to that ledge, and... Uh, how you're going to make something happen or not happen, and how you're going to kill the zombies, and uh, it's a, it takes time. But I, it's always been kind of a, a guilty pleasure of mine. I use a PlayStation. I uh, don't use the Xbox. Uh, I did use the Xbox at one point, and then I stopped using it because I, I, I kind of like the games that were on the PlayStation better than I like the games that were on the uh, Xbox, so... Hmm. Although now I hear Xbox is terrific for games, you know. But anyway, that was that was what I did. I have had a problem lately, tell you the truth, where I am just all day long dog tired. And uh, I've been trying to figure out why, you know. Marjorie says, have a banana. Has potassium. You're lacking potassium. So I eat the banana. Nothing happens, you know. Bananas. They look like they should be coming out of you instead of going in. Um, and, and so that isn't it. And then I have some grapes. I figure that maybe that'll give me some a sugar rush, and that doesn't do it. Nothing does it, and I'm just tired all the time. And uh, I find myself sometimes bumping into walls here uh, because I'll sit here for a while, and then I'll get up, and I'm all loopy. And I know it's not my heart because I don't have any heart pain at all. I don't have any chest pains at all. I mean, you know, and I took my, took my uh, blood pressure the other day, and it was pretty much, it was, uh, I think it was uh, 70 over 130 or something like that, which is considered, you know, within, within a good range. So it's not that. 
And, you know, what I'm thinking it is, is just pure depression and being indoors for, what are we going on now, seven months, right? Since this whole thing started. When, is, when did it start? I, I, it started in February. That we know. So uh, it's uh, February, m let's see, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, seventh month. We're going to our eighth month, okay, of this deal. Uh, and um, I think that's what's getting to me. I, th I, I go out. I take walks. I try to take a walk about once every other day. I go for about a mile or two miles. I went the other day. And, uh, you know, brisk enough walk that I, that I get the old heart pounding a little bit and, you know, whatever. But that doesn't seem to really help that much. Uh, and I think what I've got is I've got the, the you know, the, 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 the side effects of COVID that have nothing to do with getting sick from COVID. But just the fact that I've been stuck indoors and, you know, and it's the same thing every day. And then I go to sleep and I wake up. I get eight hours sleep and I get up. And then I do nothing for the whole day. You know, I come in here, I read the mail, I do some stuff and whatever. And I think a lot of you probably are having the same problem. You're probably going through that same malaise. Now, lately, the thing that's really gotten bad is Marjorie, who happens to be my wife, in case you're not aware, uh, has been getting very depressed. And she says, and my eye's tearing tonight too, on top of, top of everything else. Uh, she said that she uh, she's just really depressed about everything, uh, about the st especially about the state of the nation. You know, we it's bad enough we we had the COVID thing. I mean that that really because then that took a toll on the economy. It took a toll on people's jobs. It took a toll on uh, uh, people's health, like mine. Um, it took a toll on everybody, and. Um, uh, so that was that was problem number one. Problem number two, of course, was uh, this uh, this guy who's in office. Now let's talk about this for a moment. You know, I have lived to be eighty years old. I have seen many a thing in my lifetime. Uh, w when I look back on it, I say, God, did I live that long? And did that much go on? Because it went by like that. I mean. When I was a little kid and I talked about being 80, I didn't even think I would make it to 80. I was afraid I'd be dead by then. Uh, and I, by all rights, I should be. Uh, but uh, it, it, it went by very slowly, very slowly. And then all of a sudden, one day I wake up and it's uh, you know 10 o'clock in the morning and I look at the calendar and it's 80 years later. And uh, all those years I used to read a lot of science fiction, see a lot of science fiction, uh, uh, dream about a lot of science fiction. And in all the science fiction, there was always, the trouble with most science fiction is it wasn't very hopeful, okay? Uh, most science fiction was, uh, was, was very g gloomy and uh, doom-like. Doom uh, wait a minute, I gotta put some stuff in my eyes. Hold on a second. This is this is anti-itch, and uh, oh, it just make my eye feel a little better. Just it's tearing a lot, and I don't want to stop it. Anyway, uh, but I read the science fiction, you know, and most of it, as I say, it, it it's all doomsday. Okay, when I first started out, when I was a kid, the science fiction was a little more hopeful. Uh, we had, uh, for instance, Robert Heinlein wrote a bunch of kids' books. He was the guy that wrote Stranger in a Strange Land, a few other novels like that. Uh, Moon is a Harsh Mistress. Uh, and he, uh, but he wrote some children's books. I mean, it was Red Planet Mars, it was Farmer in the Sky, which was one of my favorites. Uh, Rock Chip Galileo, which they made into a movie called Destination Moon. And his stuff was all for kids and was kind of hopeful in its nature, uh, and, 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 and futuristic, okay? Uh, but most of the movies and everything that came out, everything, you know, Martians were attacking the Earth with flying saucers, badly done. Uh, you had giant dinosaurs uh, uh, 
Eating Up Downtown San Francisco. I always liked that one because I was raised in San Francisco, so to see that. Uh, and there was a giant octopus. I remember that one attacking the world. So it was all, and then there was the third kind of science fiction that fell in the category of Aldous Huxley and people like that. And uh, it was what I call uh, futuristic. And in those futures, the gloom prediction was a world of dictators and Big Brother. Uh, and uh, that was, of course, uh, Aldous Huxley came up with Big Brother. Uh, his, my favorite book of his was Ape in Essence, um, where everybody walked around naked, and I, I believe they wore, wore a thing on the front of them that said no. But anyway, let me, I digress. The point I'm making here is, I, in all that science fiction, where, where, and all those scenarios where, oh, the country was taken over by fascists and, uh, you know, we were living in a horrible thing and people were fighting against that and, you know. I never thought that day would come because I lived in America. America was this country that, uh, well, we didn't do any wrong. We always saved the world. We were kind of the heroes of the peace, or at least we thought we were. Uh, we, we, we certainly got that feeling after World War II. We mistakenly thought that we won World War II when it was really, oddly enough, the Russians who won it. Uh, we paid our price for it, but they paid their price, too, in the form of 25 million dead. Okay, we only lost about a half a million. They lost 25 million. But they certainly did their part. And that's the reason the Russians don't like us to this very day is because we were supposed to come up with a second front against Hitler, and we never did, and that's why the 25 million uh, Russians died. But in any event, uh, you know, we thought of ourselves as the good guys, and in, in most ways we were. I mean, we had a very, I think, a very honorable idea of what our system was. In most cases, it never entirely lived up to it, because I grew up in the 50s when uh, we had the Red Scare going on. We had the House Un-American Activity Subcommittee. And if you want to look at something, you know, people say, oh, things are terrible today, they're horrible today, they're really fascist today. Go, go back and look at what they were doing to people. I mean, they were having witch trials, okay, in which only by accusing you of being a communist, you never worked again, okay? Uh, great writers, motion picture writers, writers I cared about. Uh, who wrote some of the finest films that I, that I knew, people like Dalton Trumbo, weren't allowed to work because they refused to kowtow to the House on american Activities Subcommittee and name names and things like that. And so I thought that was the worst I had ever seen, and as I look back at it over the years, I always used to preach on the air, if you think things are bad now, you should have seen them back then. Okay, and um, now we have a president who is saying that if he doesn't get elected, uh, he's not above refusing to leave. And he is not against going to the Supreme Court and fighting the whole thing and going to any means necessary because he believes the election will be rigged. In other words, if he loses, it's rigged. It could, he could lose because he's an asshole and nobody wants him back again for another four years because we gave the guy a chance. He failed the audition. Goodbye. Okay? You didn't make it. Okay? See you later. American public doesn't want you. But no, he's not going to accept that. He said he will not accept his loss and that he will fight his loss. And there were implications of military interference, insurrection charges, all kinds of things. And when I heard this, I went, I'm not living in America anymore. I'm living in some banana republic somewhere where the uh, dictator of uh, Majungo uh, decides that he is not going to leave office and he kills everybody with machetes. You know, I mean, I, I just, I... And that's what Marjorie's depressed about. She says, I've never seen anything like it, and I never thought it was going to happen. Aldous Huxley, yes, Charlie, wrote Brave New World. I know that. I said that. Didn't I say that? He also wrote Ape in Essence. Um, anyway, uh, 
I just, you know, it, I, I, I see why Marjorie's depressed. I see why a lot of us are depressed and we're worried. We're worried <coughs> that this democracy is, uh, is, is failing us. And uh, we got a guy in here who's going to up to no good. Now, I think, I think that Donald Trump is not going to get reelected. I think he is going to be handed one of the worst defeats any presidential candidate who was in office at the time uh, had, would, has ever had. Uh, and I think that's going to happen because I think there's such a groundswell of people saying, I haven't voted in years, but I'm voting this time because I just want to get him out of here. I'm sick and tired of his face. Uh, uh, you know, I think people have had, they're going through Trump fatigue. And, uh, and that's what's going to give hand him maybe the worst loss any president has had. Now, I may, I may wind up coming back here and saying, well, I was wrong, you know. But I didn't know whether Hillary was going to win. I thought it would be a close one. But this one, I, I just can't see how, considering all that's going on, whether it's the Me Too movement, whether it's the uh, 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 Black Lives Matter movement, uh, any of a number of different things that are going against him, added to which his just complete neglect, his complete neglect of, uh, of, of the COVID situation. And he, he just, he didn't do his job. He didn't pass the audition, okay? And I think he's going to have it, his hat handed to him. But you know what he's going to say? Well, that's because of the mail-in votes, and they were all illegal. That was a setup by the Democrats. All Now, look, uh, okay, I, I'll give you a certain amount of votes. Let's say go bad. But if it's an overwhelming defeat, how are you going to excuse that one? Not, not every, nobody can fix an election that well. Now, the fact is that we had people if, uh, testifying from uh, the military and the FBI and so on that really when it comes to fixing elections, we've only had a few problems over the years, and they've been so small and infinitesimal that, um, you know, it just, it's just not going to happen, all right? So... Uh, that's the, that's, that's the story. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say, uh, except that we're in for it because, uh, it, 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 election night, it ain't going to be over. It isn't going to be over till the ballots are counted. And I, you know, and I don't mind if it takes a couple of weeks to count the ballots. Uh, I would rather that be the case than that we not have a good vote going on. Uh, I, I think this idea that we have to get the who the president is on the election night is an old-fashioned concept, okay? And I think that uh, it will take a, a good week before we have a good sense of who's president of the United States. I think there's a good chance that uh, Trump will look pretty good the first night because all those Republicans are going to the polls. They're not going to stay home, okay? Whereas Democrats are going to do it by mail-in, and uh, you got to wait for those to be counted. So, and like we don't even, we, some states do start counting as they get the ballots in and they just hold it under their, you know, hold it close to their vest. On the other hand, there are others who don't. And uh, 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 there are other states that, like uh, Pennsylvania, that will not open them until the day of election, the election night, okay? and count them. So they probably won't have their results for a couple of days. So it's going to be a slow uh, one. And then once it happens, once he gets his hat handed to him, he's then going to start going to the, to the Supreme Court, which he loaded with his own people to decide these questions. Uh, it's, it's, it's a real cluster you-know-what. Okay. Which I'm not going to say because I don't want to be demonetized by uh, by uh, uh, YouTube, which is another bunch of people I got a gripe with. Anyway, uh, I don't know, and so I'm just tired. I'm just exhausted. I am just I'm pooped. I am pooped. Well, let's go to the uh, let's go to Zoom and uh, see the people who are here. Uh, I think so far we have Charlie Wallace, if he joins us, and and Brian Neary. I knew that was going to be you, Brian. And um, 
Yes. Yo. But just yeah. to let you know, after your show and you have everybody wave goodbye, I'm not leaving. I'm staying here. <laughs> oh, okay. You can't make me leave. Oh, okay. Oh, man, I'm nauseous tonight on top of everything. Here we actually did Charlie, that. you can stick with me. Hmm? We actually did that after Jack's show. We stayed on, on the line uh, on Skype until 2.30 a.m. Re- really after Jack's show? Yeah, was, that's central time, too. Was Jack on there with you? No, Jack left. And, and some of <laughs> us some... just kept, stayed there and kept talking. Really? So who was it? It was me, uh, Scott Bodeker, I think it was, and Brian, uh, the other Brian. Ludwig? Yeah, Brian Ludwig and, and Mike Allen. Yeah. I'm going to go. Is he do Zoom or is he just, is he just audio? Uh, Mike Allen? Mike always so Jack. He, audio. Oh, J- Jack is, uh, is Zoom. Is, uh, no, is Skype. 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 Oh, Skype. I'm getting my, my thermometer. I want to see if I have a temperature. Um, I've been having a feeling all day. It's been, it, it, I, I take it and it keeps changing. Um, let me see here. Uh, hello, Josh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you want to turn this green? Mm-hmm. 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 98.6. <laughs> but then again, I just had some coffee. So That's we'll try it a little bit later. Anyway. Hi, Josh. How you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah. How do you like the constitutional crisis we're about to get ourselves into? Well... I don't know if it'll come to that or not. We'll see. Really? I don't know. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> what? what we I being... mean, you know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. We're being joined it's tonight. Attorney General is not helping matters, but. Yeah. 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 What a low life that guy guy is, you know. Well, it's getting to be that way. Huh? Well, I mean, hey, you know, that, that guy's a real piece of work. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. mean, he really is. Mm hmm. It's a wonder. I don't know how he was ever attorney general the first time because people who have ideas like he has typically have them, you know, for a while. I I don't think he just thought of all this. (laughs) I mean, it's possible. Well, I mean, I just feel like we're living in a banana republic. Yeah. You know, it feels like it. We have a, a guy who says, I'm not going to leave office no matter what, you know, because it's, it's going to be a rigged election. He said that last time, and then he won. So I guess he was right. It was a rigged election. You know? Yeah. I mean, he, he, has set up, he has set up every possible argument he could have, okay? He's going he's gonna to pack the Supreme Court so that if he then goes to court about this, they'll vote on his side. And we're stuck with him till we can... Uh, Get up enough people no, to. Start. I mean, he assumes they'll vote on his side, but I, I'm just saying. When it comes to those type of things, there's not much precedent there. There's not much, you know. There's just not a lot of good data to make a judgment on how mm-hmm. someone will decide, and you know. Yeah. But- I, I mean. I, it it, it it wouldn't go straight to the Supreme Court anyway. I mean, it would have yeah. to go through some lower courts first, uh, just like Bush v. Gore did, you know. And, I mean, it's a different court now than it was then, and the Chief Justice has proven himself to be a pretty, you know, honorable guy. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, uh, I think Gorsuch is much more decent than... People might think that he is. I've seen him speak a lot. I've read a little bit of his stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he might fool him over the years a little bit. So, so we'll see. Yeah. Also, uh, don't you think this new hire probably should recuse herself? Yeah, should. I mean, that would be a... Uh, that's a decent thought, especially based on some of her past comments on the very scenario she now finds herself in. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, exactly. It, it's going to be hard to deny the fact that, mm-hmm. you know, last time around in uh, 2016 there, she basically was a talking head pundit on television saying she thought it was, you know, mm-hmm. a bad deal that Obama was trying to jam through this 
uh, Merrick Garland guy and dramatically re you know change the makeup of the court you know and there yeah. she is you know I mean it's the it's the person yeah. that says oh I would never do that until they get a chance to do that Charlie Wallace Charlie yeah and speaking in 2016 all this the Republicans demanding that we got to have nine people on the court for this election is ridiculous because we only had eight people on the court for 2016. Did you hear what they're coming up with now, the Congress, what they put before Congress? Yeah. Is that they would take the Supreme Court and they make it an 18-year appointment. Hmm. That way it would also place it between elections for president. So that uh, the, 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 the election won't be an issue, you know. Uh, well, I think what it, what it's one I read said it would, they get two appointments. Each president in each four year term would get two appointments. Period. So then I guess they couldn't block them like they did Garland. Well, you mean you mean they would they would ch they would change them every eighteen years, but yeah, every every staggering. but every four years they get to appoint what two? Yeah. At the same time. Because, yeah, they would stagger them like they do with the Senate. Um, yeah. I, 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 yeah, but suppose we get, some, <laughs> suppose we get four conservatives in a row. <laughs> We're screwed, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hi, hi, you jassol. Hi, how are you? <laughs> how are you this evening, Kevin? <laughs> what do you think about, about this whole mess? It's getting worse and worse. It doesn't get any better, does it? The man, the man's out of his mind. Yeah. Uh, I, I watched this his rally speech the other day, and, or was it yesterday? I guess it was. It's amazing. It's amazing the guy's getting away with what he's getting away with. Well, you know, I said this last night, and and I think we. It's the thing that worries me the most. What worries me the most is that he happened in the first place. Yeah. Okay, and that. If we get him out of here, which I think is going to happen, Biden becomes president. In another four years, they might make the same mistake again. Mm -hmm. You know, because some other snake oil salesman is going to come along and say, let's drain the swamp. Right? Well, I mean, I, I think, I seriously right. think two things. Hmm? I think, number one, I think that losing would be fine with him because he can continue at that point to make a living as always running for president, which is what he really likes to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying there? Yeah, well, he'll always be given speeches. Loses, if he loses, he can then he run for again. president again. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think that he is so bad for their party and that many of them know it, mm -hmm. that I think they would prefer to jam this justice through, get what they want, mm -hmm. and then him lose, and they be rid of him, and they will have traded their justice for four years of Joe Biden, who they probably feel they know and can control, and I think they're okay with that. They, they're, they, as in the establishment of the Republican Party. Suppose the Republican Party, though, doesn't get the Senate, which it looks like there's a good chance they're not going to get the Senate. Okay. Uh, and they won't, don't get the White House, and they don't have the Congress, um, the, the Repu Democrats can pretty much shove anything through they want to. Well, but and, and that's what I'm saying is if if they see the wave coming and and they believe that it's going to happen, yeah. they, the Republican Party, yeah. then why not, while you still can, trade a justice that you think you can own for four years of a president that you think you can live with. Yeah. That you can swallow, you know, and then start over from there. And then if you want to take it a step further, Trump will always be allowed to run his mouth forever and ever and ever. And they'll probably manipulate him into a money raising cash cow for them. I mean, I think they would get more if he lost than if he won. Is, yeah. is what I'm saying. Because I think if he wins and he goes on for four more years like this, he'll he'll do irreparable harm to their party. And I think they might maybe understand that. 
Do no, you think I, there's do you I, think there's some Republicans, although they won't say it out loud, who are hoping that he doesn't win? I, I think you so, know yes. that he's 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 ruining the brand. Yes, because I think they have more to gain. That they'll I mean, not to gain. They will gain more. I mean, it will be there. It is tangible. They can have it. It's not theoretical. Then if he if he wins, you know, I mean, I mean that, that could be wrong. I mean, you know, I'm I'm just saying that I think that's a decent. Uh, that's at least a valid argument to think about. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. that that's all. Well, you say he loves running so that he could just run again next time. For well, Bruce. right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Is he, he can almost run for the whole time, four years if he wants. I mean, mm-hmm. there's no law that says he can't fly around the country and, you know, give rallies to people. I yeah. mean, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the, and he won't even have to pay for it himself. Some, you know, uh, bring back Trump super PAC.com will pay for it right you know i mean people will give money to him yeah yeah and, you know so it, that's it's not out of the question is all i guess all i'm saying i mean it, it's it's possible that they look at it that way mm-hmm. jeff i'm trying to remember that when we actually vote mm-hmm. for the president yeah that each state has what two people mm-hmm. who actually take the voting and then somehow come to where? To the president? I'm, I'm not quite sure how that works. What do you mean, the Electoral College? Yeah. Oh, well, how that happens, it's very simple. Uh, uh, what happens is every state has a certain number of electors. It is the equivalent of how many congress- congressmen they have and how many senators they have. All right? So let's mm-hmm. say you have two. Everybody gets two votes. All right? Because they got all, everybody's got two senators. Then if, let's say, you got one congressional district. Is there a state with one congressional district? There's yeah. a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. That they have Montana, like three votes. Alaska, uh, what happens is you, t- you have an election. You find out who won in your state. And then people are electors for that candidate. And they are sent to Washington to vote for that candidate. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but how do they get that job? Or uh, I, I, they're, they're, I don't know. People are appointed electors for a particular candidate. Trump has his electors. Uh, Biden has his electors. And if, let's say, a state Biden wins, they then send the electors that Biden has in that state. I don't think they send a representational amount, like if two-thirds of the vote was for Biden and one-third was for Trump that they split it up or anything. No, it's just two states is 100 percent. It's winner take, uh, takes votes. all, yeah. What are the two states and wh- how do they do it? Maine, uh, they split up the congressional districts. There's two congressional districts, and each one can send an elector for whoever they want. So, Okay. No. I mean, no, no, I guess they send a, whoever won that congressional district. Now, there's, the elector votes for that the, there's a problem here because every state can determine the other can determine how they deal with the election. Like, for instance, California now has a law that whoever wins the national vote gets all the electoral votes from California. That way, they, th- that way they're bypassing being part of the electoral college in that way. Okay. So if Trump did win the, the, the national vote, they would send uh, 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 people to Washington to vote for Trump, even though they wouldn't want to in California. Uh, uh, Last time, Hillary had three million more votes than uh, Trump did, so they sent electors for Hillary, even though she also won in the state as well. Uh, But what they're thinking of now, aren't they talking about that the governors can actually determine who they send and that they... They can send, uh, if, they're, if they're a Trump acolyte, they can send all their electors for Trump, even though Biden may have won the state? Uh, they'd have to change the law to do that. No, states are allowed to do that. That if a governor of the state says, we're, we're going to, our electors are going to be, we're going to do it for Donald Trump. That's it. Forget it. Send them to Washington. Um, I don't think you can do that in Texas. I, think in I Texas, don't know if you can do it yeah. in Texas, but I mean, it's, 
There's it's several states controlled can, by the state legislature. Yeah, it's controlled yeah. by the state legislature. But but let's say the state legislature are Republicans, and they decide, well, the electors that are coming here from this state, even though Biden won the state, are all going to be for Trump. I think they that, can do that. And that's another thing. I mean, there, 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 there's some deep legal. I mean, it, it gets pretty complicated in some states. Uh, yeah. People like Lawrence Tribe at Harvard and them have looked at stuff like that. I mean, I don't. I mean, there'd be a price to pay for that kind of stuff. So I don't know. Yeah, I think in Texas, it's actually a state law that the, the, yeah. all the, uh, it, the it gets folks. pretty complicated in some states. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this, uh, uh, jo uh, Josh, because uh, this, again, has to do with the Supreme Court. Uh, Roe versus Wade, they're, they're making a big deal about it. You know, I mean, if you, if you tune into MSNBC, they are painting every negative scenario they possibly can. Uh, that way they've got a show, you know. And the big talking point today was, oh, what happens to Roe versus Wade? It's gone if this woman gets into office because she's pushed seven puppies out of her pussy and, you know, she's uh, a right to lifer and all of that. Uh, as though every vote is going to be up to her. You know, it's up to nine people, not her. Um, but they talk about Roe versus Wade being well, in jeopardy. Is it in jeopardy that much, or is, is the Supreme Court, does the Supreme Court like to rule against a former Supreme Court? Uh, they don't like to. That's starting. I don't think they like to, uh, and I think in the few cases that they do have dramatic, you know, overturns, that it's been some of your historically abhorrent cases. You know, uh, you know, like a, a Dred Scott or you know something along those lines. Although that basically was fixed with a constitutional amendment. I'm just saying, it would be those kind of you know, terrible human rights issues more than anything. I don't think they like to. And again, uh, I just don't like the fact that uh, some challenge to Roe v. Wade goes to the court, uh, a woman, an abortion, they find someone, there's a case, whatever. And everybody sits down and says, okay, just so-and-so appointed by a Republican check, Republican check, Democrat check, check that. Oh, six Republican, three, it's over. I, right. I, just, I just don't think you know. I mean, yeah. See, that's that's what that's, that's I just the don't. kind of crap that, that, that Trump is pushing out, though. See, that's all Trump. That's all you, what that's you all used he's to pumping do. Out. He's shooting yeah. all that stuff out just to to bend people's minds. I wonder the, how the many. The Supreme Court is totally different. They're they're on the, they're their own mind. They're going to do what they are going to do, and Trump can say all he wants and think all he wants. Mm -hmm and tell people what he thinks they're going to do, but what they're going to do is what they're going to do. Well, I think they have to rule mm -hmm. on, the, on the constitutionality of the question being brought before them. In other words, their job is not to make law. Their, their, their job, if I'm not mistaken, Josh, is to interpret the law based on the Constitution, right? To apply, well, yeah. yeah. That is their job. I mean, in some cases, they end up, quasi-making law, if you will, because their interpretation may alter or void a law. So, therefore, you could technically, I think, explain it that they made law, but that is obviously not their function. Their function is to interpret the constitutional law. charge, if you will, is to interpret law in cases put before them mm -hmm. and to decide, you know, constitutional questions that lower courts couldn't decide or that did decide, but they thought was worthy of taking up because it, you know, uh, posed a, a, a national issue that was worthy of their interjection to it. So, you know, they don't work for anyone except themselves and the people. They're not slaves okay. to the president so, or the party that appointed yeah. them. So, so in the case of this Kegel deficient woman that he's thinking of putting into, uh, into uh, uh, the Supreme Court, uh, 
really, if she's a good justice, she won't rule on something like Roe versus Wade based on her own personal feelings about abortion, but on I mean, what the on what the law says and what the Constitution says. That's but, that's certainly the hope, right? Yeah, yeah but but do, do you expect she would? I don't honestly know that much about her. I mean, she's, I mean, I, she's already made. It. Uh, public statements about Roe versus Wade that she just feels it's horrible, you know, it's terrible. But it, that's not what she's being hired to do. Right. Is, is she yeah. is, it's not, she's not being hired to dictate morality. She's being hired to interpret the Constitution. Yeah, right. She's being I mean, hired to make sure that Trump court. wins. What? If there's, if there's an yeah. issue with voting. Mm-hmm. But well, that's a personal I mean, opinion I, yeah, outside the court. Yeah, it's, but you're assuming you're he, he that's a bad assumption on his part because he's assuming that all the other justices are going to go along with him as well, and that's not necessarily true. They may look at it and say, "Hey, look, this guy lost." Okay? Fair and fair and square, you know. Uh, uh, and and vote based on that and not based on some kind of allegiance to him. Yeah, there are three people on that court are going to have allegiance to him. But they don't once they're in there, they don't have allegiance to anybody. I, I, I don't know that there is anyone on that court that has allegiance to him. I don't. I don't. I don't personally feel like they hold allegiances to people. I think they are true to their personal method of constitutional interpretation. Yeah. I've always felt that way, and unless something drastic happens in the future. In my lifetime, that's the opinion that I hold. That's the one I've always held. I mean, I think there have been isolated individuals in the past mm -hmm. who lived in circumstances of their time where they sort of brainwashed themselves into things like that. I mean, you know, I mean, Chief Justice Taney, you know, didn't think blacks were equal to whites and he said so in a legal opinion even though it would be difficult if not impossible to find such a legal justification in our founding documents you know mm -hmm. and, and 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 the opinion at that time in its contemporary time was a hot issue it was scoffed at it led to a civil war and it's long been held as the largest judicial black mark in our history so that's what i'm saying those things stick out they stand out yeah even when they happen right so mm -hmm. I, I i don't have a huge fear of it at all i mean that is the one advantage to non-electable lifetime appointed people holding that job mm -hmm. i mean justice Breyer, yeah. everyone's liberal hero thinks that Lifetime appointments of non-elected people is, he, he's the poster guy for that. He thinks if you do away with it, you will totally destroy the court. I happen yeah. to agree with it. Now, if other people yeah. don't, that's a valid, you know, hmm. that's a valid argument. It's a, you're allowed to have that opinion. But, you know, I mean, Justice Breyer is, a, is a, with the death of Justice Ginsburg, uh, Ginsburg he's, he's probably the left's new guy, right? Hmm. I mean, and that's his opinion, you know. So I, I don't think they hold these personal, I, I just... I, I never have believed and I never will believe that a justice sits down at the computer to begin to write an opinion after they've heard an argument and they have sat down in the chair and they've said, man, what, what do I think about this case? And then they say, but I was appointed by Trump. No. Uh, uh, Bree has his uh, hand up. I just don't buy it. Hey, yeah. hey Alex, do you yeah, remember uh, the 1950s, late 50s with the quiz show scandals? Yeah. Do you remember Charles Van Doren? Mm-hmm the other yeah mm -hmm. so what they said was they they didn't have to ask somebody what they knew they'd sit them down and they'd ask them questions and they knew what they knew and then that's when they would make them a contestant because they knew they could ask in a certain area and they were going to get and eventually they just gave them the questions and the answers but they could tilt it they no, could what they didn't the give they didn't, they didn't give them the questions and answers what they did is they would say when you go home this week, study this area of, of a particular subject, well, you know. Some were given. James Snodgrass was given questions and answers, and he wrote them down and sent them to himself, and that's what became, in the Congress, what they used. 
uh, Mary Wynn also had the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, she had the answers, questions and the answers. So, but early on, they didn't. See, they oddly didn't. enough, they oddly enough, oddly enough, I was for the, the rigging of those programs. <laughs> and here's the reason why, is those programs were only meant to do one thing, and that was entertain the people entertain. watching them. And yeah. so they did this in order to gin on, up the watchability of these programs and the excitement on these programs for the audience. And yeah. it didn't matter whether it was rigged or not. There was nothing terrible about that. It was the drama that was created by that win or that loss. And so I felt that if, if they felt it was in the best interest of their show to somehow give people answers and do things like that, as long <laughs> as they gave them the money, you know, uh, didn't uh, well, but you see, so this is this is where it gets down to Jack Barry didn't have to tell them the way to vote when they sat down, they already knew before they put him in. Now, I have to think, you know, that Trump made this decision because he knows his base, and this and and this can, you know, and he knows that she's going to vote a cer certain ways versus others. Now, he can he guarantee that? No, and and is there a direct line of influence? No. Same with the quiz shows, but look what happened. Well, I, mean, I think said, said I, it wouldn't go to the Supreme Court right away, anyways, right? But it has to go through a process. I think it has to go to a lower court first, right? I mean, they can do it fast. I remember they did yeah. it very fast during the the, the Gore yeah, situation. Gore. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they. Yeah, I mean, they they can expedite after some lower courts, you know handle the, the local issues. I mean, election night's over or whatever, and we counted some ballots. Yeah. And not every state is going to have, you know, cont contested issues or whatever. I mean, you know, no one's going to contest anything in, you know, fucking Nebraska where he'll win by a fucking million votes or whatever. But you're going to have a handful or whatever that are, and then in those states, they'll sue for this, that, and the other in the state court, and then Hmm. Whatever that happens, they won't like it, and then they'll sue for this, that, and the other in, in the local uh, federal district court, you know, and then you'll have three or four of those. Hmm. And that, I mean, that's what went down in Bush v. Gore in the overall. Yeah. And then after, you know, two or three weeks, some expedited this or that and the others, maybe, we don't know, you know, a handful of them might make their way up there, and then the court may decide to, you know, take it on and have an emergency hearing or what i think they're already in session anyway because john back. larkin yeah okay. yeah so the, the the constitution doesn't say that the uh state legislators well the state legislators legislators choose the uh, electors right yeah. but the constitution doesn't say that um it has to be based on the popular vote of that state or anything like that so in other words if it you know, it's up to the state legislators. If they want to um, choose their own slate of electors to go, they can do that. And so, yeah. it, you know, if they're if it's a Republican legislature, fuck, you know, Trump. And, and in fact, that article in the uh, Atlantic that came out this week, the guy actually, the guy, the guy who wrote the article had talked to um, a Philadelphia uh, Republican national committee and they and they're already talking with trump's campaign to uh you know to, to coordinate and to um basically uh if there's any kind of you know you know trump says oh hey you know we i won what's going on with these extra extra votes you know that they can just say oh we're just gonna choose our own electors and trump wins that state yeah are, that's they, are they in session are the legislatures in session they don't Texas, need, I don't it? know if I don't know that they even need to be. I don't well they will they choose the electors, you know, when it comes time to choose the electors, they choose the electors. And if they choose not to uh, listen to the voters, they can do that. The constitution does not say that they have to. The constitution says it's up to them. They can choose to choose whoever they want. Yeah. Right. But that's right what now, that's what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Most of the states have chosen that that all the electors vote for whoever won the popular vote in their state. Yeah, but the, the legislature can change their mind. It's Here, up to them. Here's, here's what's know. happening, though. Here's what's happening. Just look at everything Trump has said, everything Trump has done. He's setting up the scenario for what's going to happen, okay? To begin with, he knows he's not going to win. 
He knows he's not going to win. The Republicans know he's not going to win. That's why they're rushing through this nomination. If he felt he was going to win, if they felt he was going to win, they go, eh, we'll wait till after the election. No big deal. You know? But they no, that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't wash, Alex. Because even if he what loses, do you mean it doesn't wash? Still do it. What do you mean? What, what do you mean that doesn't wash? What I'm saying is they know in their heart of hearts he's not going to win. That's why they're rushing I, it through. Okay, okay. Let's say that they don't rush it, and November fifth rolls around, and Trump has lost. Would the you election. agree? Would you agree? They Bree, can still push it. Bree, would you agree? There's something very wrong with trying to go through this nomination process at this time where we're only, what, 30, how many days till the election? 35? There were, there were 44, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg was uh, installed in 42 days. Wait a minute, when hold, she on a was second. hold on a second. I'm, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking no, about the right fact. Now. We're talking about the fact that we're so close to an election that it really boggles the mind that anybody would even consider appointing a nominee to the Supreme Court while we're this close to an election. You know, they, they wouldn't do it with, uh, with uh, Obama, and that was in February. Yeah. Okay? But, I mean, this, well, is, this is out of line. Days. And the reason no, they're yeah. rushing it, the only reason they're rushing it, Bree, is because they know he's not going to win. No, I, I, I don't agree with that. Well, you cannot agree with it, well, but it, how, many, how many people would agree with they, my assumption? They, 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 yeah. These are different situations. What do you mean? First of all, uh, Barack Obama was in his final term, okay? But, but that, that's a whole other ball of wax. The, the election doesn't matter. Trump, Trump can appoint now or November 5th or 6th or December 1st or January 1st or January 19th. Can't do it January 21st. Can't do it January 21st. No, he can't. Right. He's got two months. The only reason he wants to do it is because he, he must believe he gains or he has a benefit with his base by doing so. He, you know, you know, you know right. what? According to, the, according to the polls that are out, he's losing more than he's gaining because there are some people who, uh, 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 more than 50% of the American public, actually only 38% agree that he should be allowed to do this right now. You know, right. The rest don't feel that he should. And that's losing a large amount of people. What? I think it's close to 70 percent that feel that they should wait until after the uh, the new president yeah. comes in. So how how, uh, how does that play with your idea of playing to base? Remember the new his, ba his base comes isn't in January his, 6th. his base isn't going to get him elected because his base didn't give him a majority before. Yeah. Okay, and his base is <clears throat> he had his base plus people who decided to vote for him. Now he's just got his base. If he just plays to his base, that's it. It's toast. Yeah. I think his base is too stupid to understand the Supreme Court anyways. Right. Yeah. That's a point that I was just going to make is his base doesn't even know they don't even what know. that implicates. I think well, it's he, the power, the Trump they don't, power. They don't understand. He can stand yeah. up there and say, oh, it's going to make a big deal, and it shouldn't make a big deal, and it probably won't make a big deal, but he's going to gaslight them to make them think it's going to make a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's just that Trump power he wants. We're going to do yeah. this swiftly, you know. He uh, wants that power. Jeff, who doesn't have his mic on, uh, turn your mic on. There you go, Jeff. Thank you. There we go, yeah. The one thing that I really think that we all have to consider, mm -hmm. that if Trump comes up with some crazy idea that is theoretically outside the box, okay, he doesn't care. No. And you know what? The Senate is really people who have to make that decision. And you know what? They're not very good at coming up with creative answers that they've never worked on before. And I think there, there can be some very nasty problems that Trump can get away with a lot of crap. Well, who's talking? Somebody? Bring your head noise. He, he, he muted. Oh, um, uh, you know, I mean, I just, it, it's just, it's horrible. It's terrible that we're even discussing this, know. you know? Yes, John. What about this, um, this bullshit about these nine ballots that were found in Pennsylvania and they're making this big fucking deal about it? And, uh, I mean, Barr is, you know, claiming, oh, you know, look at that. Ah. 
Here we go. You know, they're trying to steal the election. Nine fucking ballots they found on the floor <laughs> in some little podunk county. And that's the fucking whole thing? Come on. That makes Seven the, of them, yeah. Yeah, that makes the whole thing wrong, you know. Seven, yeah, those seven votes were going to put Trump over the top. And how do we know that the ballots that wound up on the floor even had Trump checked off? That, that's like um, the attorney general telling the president, hey, you know, some, some guy's got a parking ticket over out by, uh, you know, by the White House, you know. I mean, uh, that shows that, you know, something's going to, you know, there's Russians trying to, you know, crank over the parking commission or something. You know, by the way, by the way, this thing has gotten so bad. I don't have it here. I have it in the other room that uh, some military generals have stated yeah. that given the if they were given the order to just do what do uh, in, uh, fight against an insurrection because of this election, they will not do it. Yeah. I mean, they had to say that. I mean, the fact that they even considered that was a possibility is is just beyond any measure of comp comprehension, you know? Well, I mean, there, there's there's no doubt, uh, and people who love Trump couldn't deny this. They, they would say that this isn't true, but, you know, Phil or any of the others, he has said a few things in recent days, you know, with the, oh, if you get rid of the ballots and there won't be a, uh, it won't be contested, it'll be a continuation, you know, that, he has said some things in recent days that if a, if a, if a, Stupid ass president of some African nation had showed up at the UN and said some shit like that when they were all there having their little fucking shindig. We'd all sit around and go, <laughs> "Look at that fucking dumbass motherfucker," you know. But he's Thank God we live in America. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right? I mean, come on, you know. I mean, that's that's the kind of stuff that you know, the the African president running around with his big fucking general all the time and his limousines. I mean, this is shit that we make fun of in movies, right? I yeah. mean, that's the kind of stuff that he's said in the last probably 72 hours. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean... So guess what they're doing to us right now? You would laugh. Right. Well, right. well, that's my point. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, it's... It, that's what we would say about some, you know, it doesn't have to be Africa. Someone will write you and say that I said it because I don't like black people or something. So let's go with some far eastern former Soviet republics you know, yeah. they've got guys that do that stuff too, right? You know, they get on yep. there and, you know, Belarus has got that going on right now or whatever, you know. Well, he's enamored by the whole mm -hmm. dictator thing. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, there are some of those places that have a president, you know, I mean, like Russia. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, you know, all, the, all the medals, on, man. All the you medals know. and everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> Big furry fucking I don't Kobe. know. I just, you know. You would laugh. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's not funny now. <laughs> what are we going to do? We're going to get everybody out to fucking vote and just get it over with. Yeah. Now, That'll here's be. my question. Are you going to go to the polls or are you going to mail it in? Um, I'll go to the I'm going to work the polls, so I hope people, will, yeah. people go. <clears throat> I'm going to go to the poll. Uh, we're oh, going to yeah. go I'll, early. I'll, I'll fucking stand in line if if I got to take the whole goddamn week off work and fucking stand there the whole time we're voted we're voted we're going to time we're going to go up to 138th street and vote early yep about a week ahead of time maybe more they got, than they're, they're opening them up early we're opening it up for we're going to do 4 days i believe down here in this county we only do one mm -hmm. and we're going to have four polling places and they're going to be large polling places uh, rather than 15 i believe so I'll probably be working four days, 12 hour days. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to be different, but yeah. fine. Yeah. Get out, yeah. out there and do it. You yeah. can't say that, uh, the first person that says, oh, I forgot. I, I forgot about voting. Well, you know what? If you didn't know you got to fucking vote this year, you're fucking, yeah. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> if you say you forgot that you got to vote, man, Take your head out of your ass and. This is the year to vote. Go yeah. back to your planet. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, I think it's going to be a rather high vote count. Myself, uh, they, it should. They, they're predicting that it may be the biggest we've seen. Maybe like yet. no other. Like no other. The greatest, like no other. Well, we'll, we'll be voting like other countries do. 
you know, uh, but in, in greater numbers. And I, I think the greater numbers are going to be to the detriment of Trump. You know, it's not like people are so enthusiastic about Trump they're get, getting out to vote for him. But people are enthusiastic enough to vote against him. Oh, right. That's that's good. I mean, I think that I think that high turnout, if I'm not mistaken, has historically favored the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's probably the case. And uh, I, I mean, look, I, I'm sure that despite what he says, that there are people that work for him or have been hired out by them who are looking into this. So I'm sure they have these warnings and that information. And, and he, you know, he either has been told and is still acting this way or they know it and they're afraid to tell him because of they, of what he is, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. I can see people in his admit, oh, you know, don't, don't tell them that. You know, I mean, which is dangerous yeah. for America to begin with. Kevin? You know? Kevin? People can't speak freely like that. I just found a Trump accomplishment. He got people to vote. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's true, though. I mean, you know, if it takes this kind right? of thing to get something like that going, sometimes those people will continue to vote. And that, you know, that could be good for the Democratic Party. I mean, look, Joe Scar Scarborough wrote an article in the Washington Post because he does – He's like a part-time columnist for them now or whatever. And, you know, that was his his op-ed that he wrote, I think it was today or yesterday, that basically it's probably a little too late to fix it now that Trump has absolutely, positively in his mind, he is going to destroy the Republican Party as you know it for the current generation. You know, that it might not look like it today because they all love him and everything's great, but a year from now, they're probably going to look back and say, eh, that wasn't good. He's not saying it's going away or anything I, I, like I think that. I think what's going to hurt just, the Republican no, Party really. is not that Trump existed, but that no Republican stood up to him. Right. You know, and, and nobody, no, that was his point. Yeah. And nobody has said, this guy has been terrible for our brand. Let's not back him. We of course we want a, a Republican president, but we don't want it to cost us votes in the future. You know, right? Uh, and I mean, and I but, but say none I of them, say none of them stand, Romney. none of them stand up to him. I mean, what's this with? Uh, I mean, the disappointment is uh, is uh, Romney. You know, I mean, come on. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, Josh called that. Yeah, you know, did. a couple. Yeah, look, months I mean, ago. I, I yeah. Just, I, he called that a month ago. He said, you know, they're all going to sit there and sit around, and all of a sudden, you know, when, when it comes to uh, making their decision, Romney's going to turn right around and talk out the other side of his mouth, and yeah, sure did. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It, because he occasionally fools you into thinking that he's a, you know, half-decent human being with yep. some fucking integrity. Just when you, just when you had, a, had, a, had a hint that he might be yeah. a human being... I mean, yeah, he he. Matt Romney's the drug addict that's been squared up for a couple three days, and you think this might finally be the time that he's going to get off. The seat. And then all of a sudden I mean, he goes what, out and has a. Dr then he goes out and has a drink and is a total right. asshole. Yeah, yeah. And that's I what mean, Trump you know. said at his rally the other day. He goes, oh, "I was mad at Mitt Romney, but he's my friend now. I like him now again." Right, you I mean, fucking asshole. On, man. Right. Well, you know, we still I'll don't know. Them. You know, we still don't know when it comes to. I mean. We pretty well kind of know what's going to happen if this comes to a vote in the Senate, but there's a, there is an outside chance that some senators will suddenly have a second thought. You know. Uh, yeah, there's a chance they may then be able to, if some pressure is brought to bear, they can still always play that card that said, "Well, I was okay with it, but I don't like the nominee, and I vote no," and then they can maybe get. To you know, yeah, I was okay with putting one on, but I I don't like the person. He I mean, chose, chances but, are she is going to get you know. confirmed. You know, right? They, they, you know, there's, there's isn't much of a doubt in my mind. I right. think. I mean, they all have an out, and their out is to vote no. You know, I mean. Well, their out their out is yeah. to simply say that they don't think that at this point in the year and in the election process that a decision should be made on this. Right. At this point, but for the ones that have said that they're OK with confirming someone, they can still then they can still 
But you see, you know, you know, you, you know why? You, don't like the you, you know what they're confirming? Them. They're confirming somebody to be there for Trump when he questions the election. Well, I mean, they, you know, and to vote for him. I mean, this this next election could be won by the people. Yeah. Six million vote difference, right? Uh, the, all the electoral college going over there for 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 Biden. All right. Yeah. And it could still come down to the Supreme Court saying, no, it, it wasn't a legitimate election, you know, and completely throw the thing out and de 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 disenfranchise us. I mean, this question should not be brought up right now because he's even said, well, we need to have a full Supreme Court. So when this <laughs> thing comes to the yeah. court, because he's planning on getting it to go to the court, well, he want, what he's saying is, I want my people in there to have it come out the way I want it to come out. Yeah. Doesn't get more corrupt than that. No, that that's corruption at its very finest. And I, I mean, I, and I think again. some sort of just incredible reversal of typical American democracy, like, you know, a court decision that says, ah, it was all, you know, we had a do-over. What I mean, the people that are on the court are, are just people who are in that line of work that they're constitutional traditionalists that love the law. I mean, I just don't see any of them really, but certainly not a well, majority. I, I of them. just have to say to all those people out there that no. are pro Trump. Okay. And think that Trump's doing the right thing. Shame on you. Shame on you because what you're doing is you're throwing our democracy in the toilet. Okay. Because that's what he's doing. You're, you're taking this democracy and you're allowing it to be uh, be ruined, to you used for a a, a demagogue's uh, ego, all right? I mean, it's terrible. It is just terrible. Shame on you if you are a facilitator no, for this guy. They 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 just care about you know the money and the power. And if and, and if you think about it, Trump is a terrific foil for. You know, in a way, at first Republicans didn't know would he be, you know, negative, positive. And then it was like they were always like they would say something in support, and then they'd have to come back and say, "Oh no, I didn't mean it." And it got all—it was very confusing. But then eventually they just knew: just let him roll with it. Let him take all the lightning; he'll be the rod. But we'll behind the scenes, we'll get all the things done we want to get done. And that's what's happening. That's always what happens. What have they gotten done? The the Democrat oh, well. The, the Democrats need, well, federal uh, appointments. The, the Democrats need to run Oprah or Tom Hanks until they realize that. No no one I've ever, I have not met anyone who's excited by Biden. They're sort of like. No, but nobody's excited yeah, by Biden. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Evils. Hold on a second. I agree with you. I, uh, uh, but you don't have to be excited about Biden. You only have to think that he's going to, under his stewardship, he's not going to ruin this country. Okay. And that we well, need somebody. We need somebody who's just going to balance it out for a while, you know. And so, no, I don't want Oprah as president, and I don't want Tom Hanks as president. I want somebody wow. who's a professional, you know. Well, I think we're moving in the, the direction of we're going to have The Rock as our president, you know, in four years, or or Kim Kardashian or somebody. I mean, and you may think no, but no, who could have predicted Trump? Well, that, you know, I mean, let's face it. They elected a bad TV personality uh, with terrible ratings uh, and, they, and a guy who failed as a billion. He claimed to be a billionaire, but failed at business miserably, just miserably. And they pointed to those as his accomplishments, you know. Uh, I mean, go ahead. You want to you want to make uh, make somebody president of the United States as a TV uh, uh, guy? Uh, hey, how about Alex Trebek? Come on, he knows all the answers. Chuck Woolery, yeah. huh? Chuck Woolery. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, uh, it's just uh, it's time for America to start taking this seriously and not thinking everything we do is a goddamn reality show. And that's the problem. They voted for the reality show. They didn't vote for Donald Trump. And he because played many it, people, and they played it like a reality show. Many many people 
just don't see the government working for them. So if Trump is blowing up the government for a lot of people, well, well, it may not be working it? for them, but by blowing it up, you don't have anything. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm just trying to say, well, here's the thing. Also, if you if you watch the media every day, I see somebody retired Republican, retired two star, you know, general Navy is uh, Admiral is voting for Biden. You know, every day they bring out somebody else who's who's, you know, switching camps. Mm-hmm. You know, and Taylor Swift comes out and says, we got to vote for Biden. And, you know, and every time that happens, I just keep thinking, you know, that's what they did last time. And in 2016, you know, all of the media and all the celebrities were were a thousand percent in Hillary Clinton's camp. Yet she didn't win. How is Trump even in it? I mean, if you look at the media, mm-hmm. other well, than, he- you know, the Trump media, you would you would swear I mean, Aaron Burnett just had another person on. You would swear that they were actively working to, you know, to get Trump out. Bob Woodward went on record as saying, "You got to vote for Biden." Well, I'm sorry, he's a journalist. You know, he he purported to be. I, he, well, he, you know, I don't. I uh, 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 Bree uh, purported. Bob Woodward is one of the finest uh, 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 journalists we have in the country. The fact that he has an opinion on a subject after researching it and researching it doesn't make him any less journalistic. And he's looked upon as a great journalist. Over the years, he's done empirical work. He shouldn't have made a call on this. He didn't make a call. He got called, and he had the recordings. That's what what the call was, Bree. No, I mean... He he has he has now come out and said vote Biden. Yes, because he spent how many hours talking to this guy and came to this decision. Yes, uh, Kevin. Trump is. I I said so. Why can't he make a call on it? So so then you'd be surprised if the Supreme Court makes a call for Trump or or Roe v. Wade. No, that's a different. No, no, no. no. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, it does. Bob Bob Woodward is not the Supreme Court. Bree. Nothing to do with it. Yes, he's at one point he was more powerful than them. No, he wasn't. Oh, he was on. never more powerful that than that. That's not even He close. got a sitting president. He got a sitting president to resign. No, he didn't. No. Come on. Oh, you don't think Bob Woodward no, had he... anything to do with Richard Nixon? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, my fault. My bad. It. Bob Woodward had nothing to he do had, with he, Nixon he, 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 oh, had, he had, had a it, part in it. He had something to do with it, uh, but, he, but he wasn't the whole thing. He told the story, and he exposed it, but, yeah. but it was the... the the American people and their representatives that kicked Nixon out. He helped, he helped and he's been chasing a Watergate ever since. He helped he's expose a good writer. Her, he's a good just journalist. like he's trying to he's do now. Books. He's, he's, he's <laughs> constantly trying to do the same thing. <laughs> he's written okay. bad books. I mean, they're not a bad all been great. But Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That Josh talk, he's probably That's the only one who read nothing all this. to do with the Supreme Court, huh? though. What's your, you, what's, your feel, how, uh, J- Josh, what's your Josh? What's your what what what? Yes, uh, John. What? If you're wondering how Trump got elected, watch this HBO documentary called Agents of Chaos, and it's about the whole Russia thing. And I've watch got, that thing, and, then, and then ask yourself, how did Trump get elected? Two things: that, money, Russia. Yeah, yeah. and fucking social media. Not and, even uh, see Facebook. It. So. Facebook, yeah, go ahead. How is how is it? Answer me this: that Trump is even in the race. Like, Money, how, how does he show up in polls? I mean, because if you if you believe all these things, he should he should be zero percent. He should have been kicked out. Nobody should be voting for him at all. And yet, there's a chance he's still competing. He's in the race. He's in the game. He's yeah. still competing. Because how? Of how? Well, stuff. because he has the bully pulpit, uh, Bree. Yeah. And he's Money, got his Russia, own fucking bullshit. channel. He's got three or four channels that belong to him. I mean, but he, you know. It, 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 he's got OAN, he's got Newsmax, and he's got Fox. They're all in the bag for him, big time. And it's all bullshit. <laughs> That's what I meant, that's the third element. Money, Russia, bullshit. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, I mean, I, you know, I'm so tired and I, I and again, I, I, uh, I, tonight started talking about Marjorie and how just depressed she is about all of this, mm-hmm. you know, 
and how depressed I am, and the fact that it's even affecting my health. You know that I, uh, but uh, I mean, uh, COVID is one of the problems. Uh, one of the, the, I think the main issue in this uh, campaign shouldn't be anything else, but the handling of the COVID situation, because yeah. that was the whole ball of wax. That's the economy, that's employment, that's everything. And he did nothing about it. Zero. Right. Zero. You know, uh, he gave he gave some press he gave some White House briefings. Yeah. But they remember exactly what he's gonna say though. He's gonna go through his his script. He has that script that he talks about every single little plane flight he has on this tour. Yeah, he'll go through the whole thing. I did this and people were saying I shouldn't do this. I did this before anybody. I wanted. closed down China. Well, he closed down China. The only thing is, that wasn't where the bugs were coming from. But and that's his. 40, about 40,000 people came in after he did that. Well, they, they, they were still people being allowed into this country from China, but nobody was stopped from Europe until mid March. And by then, 3 million people had come through JFK here in New York. And that's why we got terribly infected. But yes. that's his script, and Biden has, Biden's people have to be smart to have the script to attack that nonstop. Every time he starts going into his spiel about what he did, Biden's got to be there and attack, attack, attack on this debate. Yeah, but I mean, uh, uh, the fact of the matter is, yeah. is that, that it, the, 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 he was remiss all the way around, and then even after that, He's going on the air going, ah, it's like a bad cold. It'll be gone once the warm weather gets here, blah, 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 blah. None of these things happened. They were all misinformed statements on his part, you know, completely. If Biden doesn't attack that, it's going to be Trump saying those lies and everybody believing him again. That's why Biden I has think, to be on the attack. Yeah. No, I think you know, Kamala Harris can attack, but when Biden attacks, I think he will it's more people are will be turned off and we'll just say ah oh, this is all politics you know i don't like this they're and always slinging money. and they're not going to, they're not going to be put off by trump and his way of handling some, these things some I, th I think a lot of people will be yeah but i so it, it comes down to who is more vehement who is more oh i think you know, biden uh, i don't think biden's going to be uh, vehement at all i think biden is going to be very reserved as a matter of fact and cool and i mean calm. the voters like whose voters will will go to a rally and take uh, to on begin with, don't think itself. of Biden voters as Biden voters. They are anti-Trump voters. I'll tell you that right now. Me, am I going to vote for Biden? Of course. Why? Because I don't want to vote for Trump. You know, I want that asshole out of office. And uh, the people who are voting for Biden aren't as much Biden lovers as they are Trump haters. And he has done a lot to take people and disaffect themselves from his camp over the last four years. I mean, yeah. they are so sick. It, some people want him out of office just so they don't have to see his ugly face on TV every day because he monopolizes the news cycle. That's me. He, I'll raise my hand to that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, that, that in and of itself, I mean, uh, the overexposure, you know, uh, I want to see him in an orange jumpsuit. <laughs> the only, what was the old saying? The only thing overexposure will get you is pneumonia. <laughs> you know, I mean, terrible. Um, but uh, so, I mean, do you, do you think it's going to be a uh, it, it's going to be a hoop to do, uh, Josh, uh, when it comes to um, the days after the election and all the mechanics that are going to go on trying to trying to get those votes? No, no, I'm not as worried about it as uh, the some. I mean, I don't have like a doomsday view of it. Mm. I mean, I don't know. I mean, do you think do you think he will take a loss gracefully and just exit the state? Oh no, I, I think that he'll he'll make a huge deal about it. But I I think that the results will be clear enough, and that the people by and large will basically say you know well but he could cause a gotta go. he mean, could create a constitutional possible. crisis in this country by his actions right in I, fact I, I, he's I, already he's already setting it up he's already told us what he's going to do 
you know. I, I think I think that and his and his unfortunately I hate to say it, low IQ base are gonna stir up all kinds of shit. And I you know, I, I, I don't like saying shit like that because you know, I hate putting certain people into certain you know, classes and things like this, but the things that I've seen on T V lately and these guys and out in the woods and the interviews that I've seen, and obviously it's just in the view of a camera, but mm-hmm. these people are, are deranged, and it, they're catching these people that are at these rallies, and they have no freaking clue. And, uh, you know, once he keeps stirring them up, and the closer we get to the election, and the more mm-hmm. he stirs it up, he's going to get these people stirred up, and then mm-hmm. even if I don't even think if it's close, he's still going to stir up shit mm-hmm. and he's going to get them people stirred up. And you see it right now. I mean, in these in some of these uh, these rallies, mm-hmm. they got people walking around with freaking guns. Yep. Yep. And and they're going to come out of the woodwork and they're going to have their guns. And what are they going to do? You know, yeah. Let me just me thinking about yeah. going out and getting a freaking cut. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't necessarily want to do that. By the it's way, stupid to be thinking like that. By the way, if you looked at our chat room, basically yeah, American, American Patriots he, diarrhea. All he, over. He's just talking to himself. Yeah, he is. That's all. It's it, nobody's replying. He's just blah blah no, blah, he's blah, just, blah blah he's blah. He's just trolling like diarrhea all over the place. Yeah, yeah. American Patriot, why don't you take the night off, okay? Wait. That. Um, uh, listen. By the way, let me just say that um, on Monday I'm not going to do a show because it's Yom Kippur. I'm not going to do one of my uh, four o'clock shows, okay? Uh, because it's Yom Kippur, it's and nice. I think most of our people are half of them are Jewish anyway, so. Uh, but, and you know, uh, I, I just think he's going to stir up so much crap yeah. beforehand, and even if it's not close, he's still going to stir up crap. Also, let me talk about uh, Monday, about Tuesday. I plan to be here, but I'm having a dental implant that day, so uh, if it if if I if it's too uncomfortable, I won't do a show. But I I've had implants before, and then I go right on the air with them. You know, it's no big deal, uh, yeah. but. Uh, you know, I, I'm just the, warning you in advance. You know, Charlie and I will do a show on Monday. Hmm? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what do we got to do? Nothing. Anyways. You know, I mean, I, 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 you know, I do. I, it's not the me that's taking Yom Kippur off. I just figure, you know, I, 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 I you know, that's what happens? Fine. Whenever I would work on Yom Kippur, I would get people getting a hold of me, saying, "How could you work on Yom Kippur? You're a Jew." You know, uh, and I had it serious XM. They forced me to take Yom Kippur off because they didn't want to look bad. Oh. So, you know, um, so I'm taking it. Uh, I'm taking Yom Kippur off. So serious XM doesn't look bad. OK, that's why I'm not here on, on Monday. There you go. Great Antifa Broadcasting Network. The Great Antifa Broad. I was thinking of changing the thing. Uh, the, <laughs> To the great Antifa. At least for April Fools. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I am in fact the uh, head of, of Antifa. I'm the I. In fact, this is our Antifa meeting here. Oh shoot! I think my dues are late. You I'll haven't them. paid them, and uh, we're we're looking forward to them. You know, get them to us soon, because we need the finances to keep us going. Anyway, that's Send it. Send in tonight. those U-Haul trucks. That's yeah. it for tonight. Uh, I uh, I think I'm okay. I took my temperature enough times tonight, and it never has gone over 98.6. So I'm uh, just getting old. That's all. Hey, that listen, Char- Charlie. Thank you so much. Okay, mm-hmm. appreciate it. Brian, as always, wonderful mm-hmm. to have you here. Uh, Jeff, great to have you here. Just to see your smiling face, Josh. Always good to have you here because you're you know a lot about the Constitution and stuff like that. Kevin, you Jassel, uh, great, me. good to have you here. Uh, <laughs> Bree, thank you, and John Larkin, who doesn't live on Larkin, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and we'll wave right back at you. Okay, here we go. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. That's our citizen panel for the week. Uh, we'll be uh, uh, back here again uh, come uh, uh, Tuesday, okay? Uh, yeah, Tuesday. Uh, if Unless my 
uh, dental surgery is too bad. You know, I've got it. I'm gonna have an implant. Uh, but I, you know, I'm, I'm a trooper. I, I'll be able to do the show. In any event, I'll see you on uh, Tuesday night, uh, 10.30, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, everybody, there's still a pandemic going on, more now than ever. It's coming back with a vengeance. So be careful out there. And for everybody's sake, wear a mask. Good night.